From Oxbow to Oslo, New York to New Westminster, we're global, baby, covering what matters to you. Let us know in the comments right now. Welcome to another episode of The Rod Peterson Show. Good morning, Canada. Welcome to The Rod Peterson Show. And uh, to you Canadian uh, sports fans around the world, it's episode 237, Darren, of Canada's Morning Sports Talk Show. How are you? I'm great. How Good. Are you? I want to do a special shout out right now. I see the snowman's watching in Terre Haute, Indiana. He's obviously on his coffee break there. So good morning, Brian Snow, the snowman. And to all the people across the country that have tuned in today. Listen, I'm going to tell you, today's going to be fun. I'll predict right now it'll probably go off the rails. And in a moment, I'll tell you why. But it's just going to be fun. I think everybody could use a laugh. Yeah. So get ready to have some rib ticklers today, you know, with what's going to go down. And uh, we've got breaking news, interestingly enough. The CFL announcing this morning a virtual season ticket holders town hall. I saw our boy k Dog saying on Twitter, well, this is very hastily called. What could this possibly be about? Randy Ambrose is going to provide a season update on the Canadian Football League for 2020 today at 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. SAS time. As a matter of fact, before I get to today's guests and the quick six show topics and all the rest, what do you think he's going to say? I don't know. I really don't. I mean, calling a, you know, a town hall and going to have an update on the season, it could be anything. Yeah. It could be plans for a season. It could be, okay, if we get the funding, here's when we're going to start or here's what's going to happen. Um, it could be a whole host of things. Very interesting. Um, it could be the, the explanation of the $150 million that we never got when he sat down in front of the House of Commons, where it's going to go, all of that. It could be his opportunity to do that again. I don't know. I'm excited. I know. I, I, I applaud the fact that he's doing it. I applaud the cloak and dagger-ishness yes. of it. Like, what could it possibly be? Way to go, CFL and Randy Ambrosi. I hope that we're not building it all up, that it's completely anticlimactic, and it's like we held a town hall to announce we have nothing to announce. That's also an, uh, that's a possibility. Yes. Right? So anyways, on the program today, uh, it's a lot of CFL Central. Dave Jameson from the aptly named Dave Jameson Show. TSN 1260 Edmonton Radio is going to be with us. Long time PR man with the Edmonton Eskimos. And uh, he was a radio guy before that. He's a radio guy again. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the NHL 2014 playoff format, which I'm going to get to in moments. Naka Sonyaka, the latest member of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, who's got some, he's got some shut spot to him. He's got some pizzazz. Hey, Wilfred Laurier guy, Toronto kid, yep. cut by the Argos on the weekend. This is the guy, folks, if you forgot, a few weeks ago tweeted, just curious, why do so many Canadians hate the CFL? His mentions just went nuts. Now he's a rider. So I'm interested to interview Naka Sonyaka. Uh, Nate Ajay, CFL veteran receiver, Eskimo Argo, uh, will be with us. He's launched a new podcast as we sit here on now day four of the training camp postponement. We'll talk to him about being a podcaster. We'll talk about his uh, CFL career, all the rest. And Enoch Mwamba, E Who Knocks, Enoch Mwamba will be with us. Uh, former CFL, most outstanding defensive player and number one overall pick and former Indianapolis Colt. Enoch Mwamba. Just checking in with everybody for coffee. And you're going to see why this is today more than ever is just a coffee get together. Don't expect any breaking news. Don't expect any incredibly strong opinions. It's just a bunch of guys and gals rapping over coffee at the coffee shop. Exactly. Right? Virtually. Virtually. <laughs> Virtually. As they say. Anyways, uh, Randy writes and says, uh, hey, Rod, Randy and not Randy Ambrose, Randy Nicole in uh, Cochrane says, Rod, how was the Typhoon Golf? Uh, it was awesome. I had so much fun out at uh, Deer Valley where we're members now and uh, also Katepwa Golf Club on Monday. I, got, I, only, I had six rounds in last year. It was my first summer off in 20 years. I'm already two in this year, and it's not even the end of May yet. That's good. I'm predicting great things. Somebody said here earlier about thanks for the heads up. They'll check their email. That must have been about the town hall thing. Yeah. Which, by the way, it's for season ticket holders uh, only. I kid when I say, well, that's not very inclusive. I'm just saying it. Yeah. Have whoever you want there. I don't care. Um... Jack in Alberta says, I hope the town hall meeting will level with fans as to what's really happening with 2020 season or not. 
so let's get into that uh, with our quick six show topics today. Number one, the NHL return to play 24 team f- uh, format. That has uh, led to our poll question today for Capital Auto Mall Universal Collision Center. Are you in favor of the 24 team format that the NHL supposedly is going to be announcing officially any day? That's what I've been reading from the Athletic. Yoo-hoo. Let's sneak around behind the. Um, I only have one. I voted yes on the poll, by the way. You can vote now on Twitter and Facebook. Here's the only problem that I have. If this moves ahead with the 24 teams, the Arizona Coyotes will be in the playoffs. And I'm wearing a Coyotes golf shirt today. So I would, they're my third favorite team behind the uh, Oilers Golden Knights who are 1-1A. and And then the Coyotes, I get it. But they've got one of the longest playoff droughts in North America. Of the big four, it's like in the top 10. Yeah. Going back to 2012. So this would have been eight years out of the playoffs if it was legit. Now the Coyotes can say the drought is over. The drought is over. That's kind of wrong. Yeah. Four extra teams got in for in the conference for you to get into the playoffs. <laughs> right. I know. And I, you know, we've been going back and forth. There's been lots of opinions on social media about this and on Twitter, especially, you know, with the posts we put out. 11 in each conference would be perfect. Right. The Coyotes are kind of in that conversation. Uh-huh. The other side, Florida's in it. Montreal and Chicago, they're, they, they kind of get the gift if it's 24 teams, right? They're out of the race, but they kind of get the gift. It's just 11 in each conference doesn't exactly work for a playoffs. 12 would be better. Eight, obviously, we know that works. But uh, yeah, so Montreal and Chicago are kind of the, uh, they get the second chance at life, really, uh, with the 24 great. team format. Which yeah. is great. By the way, 80 plus percent of you on Facebook saying, yes, you're in favor of the 24 team format. And it's similar to that on Twitter. So there's that. Uh, point two is who does it favor? I've been doing a lot of reading on The Athletic, and they're saying, uh, you know, guys with hot goalies could win a short series, a round-robin game. Montreal could go all the way to the final. And what I oh, say, yeah. my buddy from Montreal said that last week when we talked. He's like, Carey Price, everybody in Montreal is getting really excited. This could be the 25th Stanley Cup. So a couple of things there we'll get to later on. Point three, this is an interesting one. Watching the insiders this morning, Dreger, Duffy, Bob McKenzie. LeBron? Might have been LeBron. And it said, uh, this was from on Jay and Dan this morning when I was out for, for my ride on my stationary bike yeah. on the Tour de Rod. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Having my right. coffee yeah. on the stationary bike. Probably the only guy in the world that does that. But it works. They said the NHL border closure, closure sorry, the NHL says the border closure won't affect them. The U.S.-Canada border is closed till June 21st. This was on, Go back and watch it. You can on tsn.ca or on the app. It was Dreger, I think, that the GMs are saying it won't affect us. Ten minutes later-ish, I'm reading a story from the Canadian press that the, that the border closure will ensure that there will be no hockey played. This is from the Canadian press, a reputable source. It's 180 degrees opposite of what Darren Dreger had said 10 minutes before that I'd seen on the insiders. So somebody's wrong. And furthermore, how does that affect CFL players? Right. Because you're seeing information on Facebook, not really anywhere else, saying that players are being told to report with a proper uh, paperwork. I talked to a league guy today that said CFL players will not be deemed essential workers to come into work. That's from a guy within the league. So I'm not mad at anybody. I'm just saying there's a ton of, like, somebody's wrong. Yeah. Is my point. Super interesting. And I can see it. I can totally see both sides. I think CFL players, now, if somebody says they don't think they'll be allowed in, that's one thing. I think NHL players would be, you know, anybody coming to work. But I don't think that applies to a season. As in, I don't think that the border is necessarily going to be open to let players fly in, fly out, fly in, fly out, drive in, drive out for games and play as normal, right? But if you're coming in for work and you're going to go to a quarantine city in Canada and you're going to play out of that city, that's different. You're coming in. When you enter the, when you enter the country right now, you have to quarantine for two weeks and have a plan on how it has to be written out, how you're going to quarantine, how you're going to stay away from people, how you're going to get your food, all that kind of stuff. So if you're coming in for that, great. But I don't know that they're going to let people come in. You know, the, the athletes might run into an issue coming in for one game in and then leaving. Sure. Yeah, big time. So do you think that Ambrosi will just come right out and say, we're having a season guaranteed today? 
or will he come out and say, we're guaranteed not having a season today? You know, here's the announcement. Or option three, we have nothing to report. It's but gonna, thanks for your continued interest. It's going to be option three. <laughs> and, you think I so? mean, that, that'll be that. Some people will sum it up that way and say, hey, we got nothing to report. I don't think it's in his best interest to come out and, and guarantee a season or guarantee that there's no season. Unless you've exhausted all hope in May, three or four days after training camps were supposed to open. Uh, I think you want to keep people optimistic. You don't want to tie yourself to any one thing. But... He might come out and say, look at right now we're targeting Labor Day as a start to the season. And that's what we're planning for. And as it goes, we'll continue to monitor it and see if we're on track to start at Labor Day. And if we're not, then we'll continue to push it back or look at canceling it. I think that's more uh, what you can expect. Um, but I don't think we're going to hear him say that there's going to be a season or there's not going to be a season. There'll be no definitive answer. I'm going to have to rely on you to... Uh Tell me what's going on with the Ambrosi thing. Or one of you guys, because I'm getting a massage at 1 o'clock. It was pre-booked. CFL, could you please let me know in advance so I, would, you know, I wouldn't get my massages a conflict here? So I'll have my phone on. The massage parlor is open. Where I, what's not really a massage parlor? Your, it's, it's a gym. Can't you have your phone on the floor underneath the hole in the table? Yeah, she'll snap <laughs> <laughs> when she's doing it. Yeah. But uh, I, I don't know. As a matter of fact... Let's bring in the viewers. As I said, this is a coffee get-together today more than anything. So yeah. let me know your thoughts, Rod Squad. Facebook wall, Prairie Mobile text line at 840 What do you think Randy Ambrosi is going to say today? I'm a little of the column C. No news. Thanks for paying attention. He can't definitively say one way or the other. I wouldn't think. Now, having said that, all of the NHL articles that I've read are saying that the NHL any day is expected to announce that they're going to be hitting the ice. Here's the date. Here's the format. Yeah. So maybe he will. We got Texas at the end of May is going to open up for professional sports. I think it's supposed to be the first or second week of June in California. So you're starting to see these restrictions lifted. <laughs> There's so many more options that are going to be available. Jeff, the Stamps fan, writes in from Calgary, says, Darren is right. This is just PR in a polite way for Ambrosie to tell us <laughs> to stop asking. Well, we'll all be tuned in at one to find out. Uh, Tony Stefan writes it. He says, good morning, guys. Coffee talk with Wadena Bakery Donuts. Mmm, donuts. My kryptonite. Used to be uh, light beer. <laughs> now, it's <laughs> now it's donuts. Um, let me read the message from Trent in Norway. Because he's up and at him. Norway here. Interesting to hear what Randy Ambrosi has to say today. Has the NLL any announcement on their situation for playoffs? A 24-team Stanley Cup tournament would be a can't miss. Stay healthy, everyone. Uh, the NLL has not. We had their uh, commissioner on here, Nick Sikavich, a month ago. And he told us that we would be the first to know. He would come on to announce it. There's been nothing said about the NLL playoffs, but thank you, Trent, for asking. Uh, moving on, this is... Kind of painful to say. Point four, the Riders sign Canadian linebacker Naka Sanyaka. We covered that right off the top. I, I look at all the Canadian linebackers the Riders have signed, and I'm thinking, man, they are planning on starting one, maybe two. That's exciting. Yeah. But is it even worthwhile talking about right now? I know. Feels like it's not. Right? Feels like it's not worthwhile talking about. And, you know, it's, it should be, we should be in training camp, and these players should be coming to camp. It's not a guarantee they're all even going to come to camp either. You know, somebody to be ready. You got to evaluate who's going to be in shape through the pandemic. I mean, but yeah, you're right. It, it doesn't even make sense to talk about it because we don't even know if there's a season yet. No. You know, if we're even going to play. So it feels like we're just getting everybody's hopes up, you know, talking about football. But uh, what else are we supposed to do? Right. So I'm just kind of in one foot in, one foot out on that. I don't mind talking UFC. I don't mind talking hockey. I don't mind talking SGHL sim. But to, I've never been into what if scenarios because it's a waste of time. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you saw the tweet last night. A guy tweeted at me and said uh, he's a pastor, by the way. Here it is. I'm actually glad that somebody's listening. Matt Plant says, I've been appreciating Rod's reminder to stick to your job. Don't add stress about thinking about someone else's. Yeah. So I'm glad that some people are actually listening to some of the tidbits that I've been throwing out here over the past two months on how to deal with a pandemic. Thinking about other people's problems, i.e. how to get back on the field if you're the CFL, back on the ice if you're the NHL. Unless you are enjoying doing it, could be a great stress buster. Sure. 
But you have to understand that Gary Bettman's not clamoring, waiting for your email to come in. No. And I went back. Or Randy Ambrosi. And I read the, read the tweet from Brendan Romancic in, in Swift Current, the long, drawn out. Right. You know, here's all the ways you can come back. And it's very, you know, smart, very well thought out. It wasn't just a, it didn't just feel like a fan just throwing something at the, at the window. It was actually well done and, you know, put some time into that. But it's just not my thing. It's a waste know? of time. A, waste, a bit of a waste of time. But, you know, maybe that was a stress reliever for him. Helped him get through a, a sleepless night. Uh, yeah, unless you enjoy it. And that's probably a good thing. But I'm not going to waste my time with everybody's ideas because they leagues don't want your ideas or my ideas. They are making a lot of money to come up with those ideas. Brian Warishan from the BC Lions Den podcast writes in from Vancouver. He says, this is what the CFL should be doing engaging with season ticket holders, whether it's window dressing or not, we deserve an update, especially since they have my money. Uh, I, I never think it's a bad idea. They will be soundly criticized, however, if and when they do have this town hall today and say it's an update about nothing, like a Seinfeld episode version of where the CFL is at. I don't have a problem with it. And at least you're out in front, you're visible. But if they don't have something to say, they will be criticized for that, yeah. right? So I'm not even saying it's right. It's just what's going to happen. They might have the season ticket angle, too. They might have some sort of an answer for season ticket holders in terms of those of you who paid. Here's what's going to happen. Here's what we've directed our teams to do. And they might have a little bit of that, which, which should be interesting. They might have some information on the Grey Cup. Um, who knows? Um, but it's exciting. And they have our attention. That's the biggest thing. Exactly. Right now, they've got our attention, talking about it, wondering what it's going to be about, and they're going to have people tuning in. Uh, Tank Abbott writes in on the Facebook wall. He says, checking in from Estevan, been listening every day while building a playhouse for the kids. Keep up the good work. Cheers. That's from Tank Abbott. Um, Sean in Saskatoon, Sean Dahl says, my number one pandemic and life advice, you can only control what you can control. If you accept that, you'll be in a much better place. Hey, listen, I didn't get it for the longest time. Some people are listening and that's good. Most aren't. Right. But I watched the, uh, the end of The Last Dance. It's one of the notes that I have. I watched episodes nine and 10 with my wife last night of The Last Dance. Later on, maybe in the end of the show, we'll talk about our last thoughts on that. But if you were paying attention... I can't remember which episode it was. I think it was 10. Uh, the guy that wrote the book on Michael Jordan said, Michael had always had an innate ability, a natural ability to recognize what he could control and what he couldn't. And if he couldn't control it, he didn't think about it. Led to his greatness. And he also, remember that in, this, yeah. in the documentary? And he said, Michael had this incredible ability to stay present. He wasn't worrying about the past. Sorry, he wasn't worrying about the future. He wasn't stressing about the past. He just lived in the present. And it was, they were rolling up to the stadium before game three of the NBA Finals or whatever. And he's got his headphones on and he's bopping to the beat. And I turned to Cindy and I said, he looks really stressed, doesn't he? This is a fundamental thing. When you realize what you can control and what you can't, somebody's upset at you. Somebody um, doesn't like you. Yeah. What are you going to do about that? They you can't control how they... They might boo me. Yeah. Ooh. You know, you're thinking about the things you got to do when you get back. You're thinking about your family and this and that or money or whatever. No, no, no. In the next three hours, all you got to do is get ready, play a basketball game and win. That's it. That's all you got to do. So that's all that's going through. It's easy. That. Yeah. It's well, easy. Easy when you strip it down like that. And he, the great ones can do that. I'm not going to get into any more life lessons uh, here at all, but I'm just telling you, that's how I look at things. Where are we right now? It, well, how are you feeling right now? Because I'm having a great day. A great day. I feel great. Yeah. Um, last two quick points here on the rollout for Flooring Superstore. Number five, I'm getting a kick out of this. Tom Brady has a throwing session in Tampa Bay yesterday for two hours. Tampa Bay Times reported it. I got the article in front of me as to what he did. We'll talk about this later, but here's what it says in the article. Tuesday's session went better than Brady's first attempt to work out privately at a Tampa Bay park last month. After he was told by a security guard that the park was closed and he had to leave, Brady received an apology from Mayor Jane Castor. Can you imagine some Rudy Pooh security guard with an attitude <laughs> might, might not even know who Tom Brady is? Is that possible? It's like, sir, you can't, you can't. Now, Tom Brady should have to live by the rules just like everybody else. So I don't know why he would get an apology from the mayor. Security guard's just doing his job. Yeah. 
I mean, he is. I'd love to know more about that story. Maybe the security guards, you know, uh, uh, a New York Giants fan. I don't know. Maybe he just hates Tom Brady. <laughs> you know, I know you are not not today, not today. Um, I but, could go back and forth. As a matter of fact, I could spend an hour on that. Should yeah. Tom get in? Nobody else can get in. But it's the quarterback of your team. It might give them an edge. Yeah, and it's Tom Brady. It's Tom Brady. So it just seems like though this is a fantastic. It's one nope. of those things like you can't, I can't show you that document, but if I look away and you go into the top left drawer of my desk for five minutes, I'll, I'll pretend I didn't see it. That's great. what I tell you? Today's going to be yeah. a rib tickler and fun because we all need it. Roger Yee in Calgary is watching and says, uh, the mayor wants tickets someday. So the mayor, she's getting on Tom's good side. Hey, Jeff in Calgary. Pull the earplugs out. He says, why blame the guard for doing their job? I'm not. I just said, how can you blame the guard for doing his job? Yeah. I'm not. What I'm saying is, should they look the other way because it's Tom Brady? Which, by the way, this article, I should read the whole damn thing to you all because basically it's saying Tom is just scheming 24-7 how to get an edge. Get some. The article says NFL teams can't have sanctioned workouts, but players can. Yeah. Right? So Tom, like he, oh my God. He knows. The projections came out, by the way, for NFL teams from USA Today for wins. Yeah. They had the Patriots at eight. They had the Bucks at 10 wins. <laughs> had the Cowboys going 10 and six. I got it written in my phone here. I'm getting off t- target. And I got to, uh, I got to break because our next guest is ready. But the point six is, will there be... And NFL, our voters yesterday on the poll felt that there will be. I spoke with the travel agency last night. The RP show VIP experience Two is going to Florida. We've got contacts with the dolphins. The dolphins have said, if we're playing, you guys are in. So I guess I answered my own question. Yeah. And that's super. That's so exciting. But yeah, I'm with you. I I think the NFLs, I think there will be an NFL. It won't maybe look the same as we're used to, but yeah, there'll be an NFL. Well, that, that makes me feel so much better. It does. It makes me feel really good. I, and I'm not going to really spend too much time worrying about this. But how do they control the tailgates? Can you imagine the tailgate parties? <laughs> uh, Nelson, Nelson uh, is watching. He says, currently reading TB12, Tom's book. And you're 100% right. He never stops thinking about he and the people around him can get better. I'm telling you, Tom Brady's going to come out of this better than the New England Patriots. I'll tell you right now. You guys want to make a bet? I'll make you a bet. We'll have to sort out what the wording of it is. Yeah. Tom's going to win this one. We're going to Edmonton next. This has been uh, the quick six show topics of the program today for, Ro- for uh, Flooring Superstore. It's been the rollout. We'll be right back. It's the Rod Peterson Show. Facebook Live, Game Plus TV Network, and listen live at rodpeterson.com. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media. 